Hello, Disc Golf community. I'm Matt from Matty Ice Disc Golf. Um, please excuse any wind chimes or things you hear in the background. There are currently 45 mile an hour gusts here in Texas, and I can't control the wind, sadly. But I want to talk to you all today about little form things that can really help build consistency, especially as a beginner or if you're just now like switching up your form to hopefully, you know, gain more power and, you know, fix up the form, create that true whip lag action that the pros are creating. If you're, if you're trying to become a more competitive disc golfer, these little tips for you to focus on when you're doing your warm up shots will help you build muscle memory that can help you focus on the bigger, more power oriented type movements. And so let, let's get right into it. Uh, I want to preface this by saying I, I'm using overthrow uh, disc golf's uh, video with Simon Lazat uh, with his slow motion form. I believe Simon Lazat has some of the most perfect form and, and it's very true to the science and, and how a consistent physics oriented throw looks like if a physics major wants to see how you get your body to throw a disc really far Simon Lazat is probably the most fluid and mechanically sound thrower um so is Paul Macbeth but um overthrow disc golf made a video with Simon Lazat not Paul Macbeth so that's why I'm using this video instead so full credit to them I love what they're doing over there and, and I, I hope they're okay with me using their video to kind of share a few things that um the beginners and people starting to build a more professional looking form should be looking at um, to build consistency in your direction and feel of the throw because obviously there's a lot of things that go into the throw that can make your axes feel different each time you throw to where you can spend a whole day doing field work pretty much and feel like every throw was different than the last and so giving you these little ideas to focus on should hopefully help you build some consistency. At least they've helped me lately and I just like to share information because I don't know. So we're over here. Uh, here. Here's the video with Simon Lazat. I'm looking at the 350 foot throw because I think that's the first more relevant throw here. Um, all the other ones are kind of, you know, up shot based. Like th this is the first one that looks like a real throw from Lazat. And the very first thing I want to point out that beginners first starting to get, you know, you've got your X step down, you know how to lag a disc properly. Um, I, I hope you do like how to get into this position here that he's in where, you know, he's got his arm ready to swing in and lead the, the throwing arm through. Uh, you've, you know, you've seen enough form videos to see the main mechanics of the throw, right? That's where we're at. But there's a few little things that people overlook, can't really see much of when they're watching a throw because it's just, you know, you can't really see much. And so look right here, right away. I want you all to look at his foot. You can see, especially on this overhead view, look at his foot. It's perfectly perpendicular to his plane of action where he's trying to release this disc at. This is very, very important. I see a lot of people when they're first getting developed, they feel more comfortable having their foot pointed a little more out, a little more outwards in the direction of where they're going to throw, which oftentimes results in a lot of grip lock. And I have, I have this issue too. I'm, I'm no, I'm nowhere near perfect, but this is a big issue with beginners. Uh, not getting their foot planted consistently with at least a perpendicular, at least perpendicular to the plane of their throw, you can actually get away with it being tilted in a little bit, especially on higher power throws where you're having to torque a little more. But we're talking about building form. And when you're building form, let, let's focus more on pretty, uh, like what you should be doing before you get into just ripping a disc as absolute hard as you can. And this, this is what you really need to focus on as a beginner. This alone should help a lot with especially grip locks and possibly early releases. Early releases, I have to say, when you're finally starting to get that slingshot, loose arm motion down, is typically really you not gripping the disc hard enough 
more so than it is your foot placement. But like I said, perpendicular to the plane of your throw will fix a lot of grip lock. And obviously, you know, you might you might currently have some throws that come out perfect and then some throws that come out uh, grip locked. That's probably your foot landing perpendicular or open. And so if you can build that consistency of always landing perpendicular each time, every time, right? You create that constant plane that you're releasing out of and you're going to build that consistency in the direction and release of your disc. And by working on that for a day or two will allow you to access working more on pushing off stronger off your back foot or something, building those extra power-based movements. It all comes from where your plant foot's coming from, really, because you can't unlock more power without getting your plant foot in the right place. Having your plant foot you know, perpendicular to your throwing plane keeps your hips in a powerful position instead of being open. You're able to get into a stronger power pocket and really release the disc. So when I would recommend you know, spend a couple minutes before you do some of your field work or something, or maybe before a round, do a couple reps of just going through your X step and feeling what it feels like to hit that, that plant foot and be perpendicular to your throw. Feel what it feels like to just step into that. That's a big thing for beginners. Okay. So we are now going to push forward. I mean, I'm going to ignore most of the big, you know, motion based things and focus more on these nitty gritty things because at this point most people you can watch any video and see the main motion things and you know how to create that motion but you don't know how to make that motion efficient and things like where your foot is planted where your head is facing that's how you make these motions more efficient and so the only other thing i'm really going to talk about in this video um is head placement. Head placement is huge, and, and you'll see this consistent among every every professional disc golfer pretty much once you really get paying attention to this. And I'm gonna back up here frame by frame. Um, hopefully this tapping sound isn't annoying to you all. So watch, he's coming out of his X step, you know, eyes focused on where he's about to throw. And when you know, he, he's lagging that arm, leaving the disc in the same spot as he steps out of that X step. Look at how his head, as, as it's leaving, you know, looking at where he's going to throw, he's not looking at his lagging disc. And that, that's an issue a lot of people have is their head gets ahead of their shoulder. You know, you actually want your shoulder to pull your head, essentially. You want to have, when you're lagging the disc, your shoulder to pull your head through like you can't turn your head any further a lot of people turn their head kind of early and try to pull through and and a few of the pros get away with doing that and that's fine for them they're professionals we're not we're trying to get consistent good form and the way you get consistent good form is your shoulder pulling your head with that reach back to that perpendicular spot and then you reach and, and then the pull through and then your head follows after your release. And you can see that beautifully here on Simon Lazat's throw here. So he's looking forward. We're going to march forward here. You can see, especially on this overhead view and right here on this bottom corner, you can see that shoulder is pushing his head, pushing his head, pushing his head. Then when he gets a full extension here, right? And he doesn't come to absolute full extension because he's only throwing 350 when he can throw 600. So he's not fully extending the arm. He throws further than all of us. We know that. But this is his max extension on his throw right here. Look, his head is pretty much 90 degrees to the plane he's throwing, just like his foot. See how it's turned in a little bit more than 90 de than perpendicular, like I said? That's how you get that extra little power out of the hips. You close it off more instead of being too far open. But his head, 90 degrees to where he's throwing. And as he comes through, watch his head. It it doesn't really open up until that disc is pretty much uncurling. That's when his head is truly opening up and looking in the direction. I think Simon Lazat looks a little forward a little earlier than you truly should. But you know, he is a professional and he, you know he's he's built his form and it's beautiful and that's fine for him. But we're working on our own 
you know, get, getting our own game up. And for beginners, it's actually easier if you leave your head a more perpendicular for longer until it's fully released. Like I would still have my head like where his head is at now. I would have it there until the disc is fully out of the hand. I would still be looking perpendicular to where I'm throwing. And then after the disc is out of my hand, that's when I start looking forward. But just that head movement of pulling through. So you pull, you know, you come through, your shoulder takes your head to 90 degrees, and then you come through, and then your head then follows after the release. Those types of things help you gain consistency. You can't always time your neck moving just before your shoulder. That's too many muscles to move at once. But guess what? Your shoulder pulling your head, your head can't move anywhere else if it's stuck on your shoulder. And so you, you're, all, you're moving less muscles. There's less variables working. So it allows the beginner to just gain so much more consistency in their form. And this allows you to, you know, move on to other things. You can focus more on bringing in that opposite arm of your throwing arm to get extra torque off your shoulders. And with your foot, with your uh, planting foot getting planted correctly with 90 degrees or maybe even a little more tight to build extra power in the hips, now you can focus on pushing off stronger to get uh, off that back leg to get more power. Building the consistency in your planting foot and your head following your shoulder to 90 degrees, getting all that perfectly perpendicular when you're getting up there, that is going to allow you to unlock these new skills to get you more and more distance. This over the past month has taken me from 350 to 500 plus feet of distance. In the past month and a half, my form has changed dramatically and I'm, I want to post a video of me in the field and, and I might actually do that because I, I have some old videos of my old form that was horrible. I couldn't even get 300 feet, honestly. That, that was a feat for me just a month, two months ago, pretty much. And now 500 feet is just a close to max distance drive. And so it, it's these little things that I built consistency in and just like in my room, you know, just like practicing stepping into that, feeling what that feels like before I go out and do field work. That allows me to just come out and know that those are sound to where I can focus on other things. I, I can now try different shot selections. I can now see, feel what it feels like to maybe do a faster run up and run into that a little faster, you know, all these types of things to ultimately be able to throw further or be able to practice different shots, build overall consistency. I mean, th th these types of things will drop your score overall. These big motions, yeah, that's good for, you know, learning how to throw. But when you want to throw well and farther, you need to get every little nitty gritty on the throw. Last thing I want to say before I leave, I know this is already kind of a long video. Once you get all that down, you have to stay more on the balls of your feet. A lot of beginners, and I, I'm guilty of this especially, is people get comfortable staying flat footed on their heels way too much. Power comes from the balls of your heat. Your your shin, well, uh, not your shins, your calves, will act like springs. You know, you're coming through and you're just pushing. And you, you, the lighter you stay on your feet, the harder you can just push off and send the disc as far as possible. But this is the absolute last true step. Uh, I mean, you stay light on your feet, of course. Uh, you know, don't just be absolutely sitting on your heels when you're practicing this. But... I wouldn't focus too much on the powerful on the ball of your feet throw until you get these 90 degree, you know, plant foot and your perpendicular head uh, dragged over by the shoulders until you get to that consistently. But I hope this helped uh, that this type of information over the past month and a half has helped me drastically change my game and I hope it helps you change your game as well um i'm trying to uh if, if you don't know i'm trying to make the pro tour by 2023 I've, I've been working so hard to try to get good at most aspects of the game and um i've like i said i've been playing six months and I, i'm trying to see how fast can you get to professional level 
And the, this is the type of nitty gritty that you need to get to and work on and sleep on, live, breathe, think about all the time. And uh, it, you might not be as serious as I am about disc golf, but maybe you want to get better form. And, and these are the types of things you got to think about. Uh, I want to say thank you to Overthrow Disc Golf for creating videos like this that people like me can come on, look at, and learn how to throw a disc, you know. I did not know half the stuff and wouldn't know about these nitty-gritty details if Overthrow wasn't releasing these amazing viewing angles of one of the best players in the world throwing shots. So thank you to them. Um, thank you to every disc golf YouTuber who puts out content that's informative and, you know, meaningful in some way. It's, it's amazing to see how fast the sport is growing. Uh, I love the community and... I, I, I hope that we can all continue to help build each other up and become a, a great, renowned sport known for great things in a great community. So that's all I got to say today, and, and I hope um, you all can improve your games based off this, and I will see you all next time. Peace.